And that's when I said, it's a hell of a day to quit playing D&D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> and cut. All, All right. right. Very good. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That was good. I, you know, I, I thought it's good, good shoot, right? We're trying out something new, some new uh, topics, ways of uh, you know getting ready. I, I'm good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was, it was good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, uh, just good, huh? No, nothing else. No. You know, that, that, that's it. I, I don't know. I mean, good, good is good. I don't. I mean, you literally just said it was good like three times before you asked me. And I responded in kind. I mean, I just so was I just, asking, you know, what you thought in, in, in your words, like some feedback. You know, we were trying something new. I just, you know, it'd be helpful. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but I mean, I felt it was the same, and it was my words. It wasn't like I was parroting what you say. I, mean, I, yeah. I do have original thought, Jim. Yeah, no, so, yeah I understand I mean, that part. Yeah, you know, I just, I, I just, I wanted to uh, you know, find a way that we could both have some energy and new stuff for the show. And you know, good is fine, I guess. But you know, I was looking for more like it was energetic or interactive. I really engaged with the subject matter or something like maybe like use your brain or something over here. But I, I get it. I get it. Right? It's, it's tough for you. It's not like I'm not flying across the damn country to shoot these shows. So you okay. know what? You can do it all on your own next time then. Okay. Well, so, sorry I'm not a college graduate. Uh, but that's that's the way things end sometimes on WebDM. You can't have a beginning without some ending. And you yeah. can't have an ending without a new beginning. I mean, like, I can see that. I you Until know. the end of the universe. Sure. Which I'm sure something else will begin after that. But I sort of feel like the end of the universe has already happened, though, right? Has it? It must have, because if time exists and it, in its own dimension is not experienced linearly, but as a whole, mm -hmm. then it encompasses both the beginning and the end of itself. In one well, unless, unless time is actually what I think it is, which is just a construct for our own psychic uh, sanity uh, and the universe is literally just in a state of constant decay and that doesn't matter about time it's just a matter of, of decay mm. and it doesn't matter how long it takes because it is a constant thing yeah so I've I mean, seen it was a constant thing then it's not eternal well, I don't think it? it'd be eternal I think it'd be unless eternal. it dies and just begets new life it just starts all over again right it's the eternal return time is a flat circle that's what Alan Moore believes, and I think I, it's the most—it's the most sane version of any of it I've ever heard. And I was like, mm -hmm. "Oh, that's really kind of sane." It's like predeterminism, but with free will, so it's kind of cool in that sense. Yeah. Most of the time, I find predeterminism just an excuse for assholes to be assholes. Well, I was so. going to do it anyway. <laughs> I'm just, just following my program. Uh, yeah, man. yeah. All right, let's talk about endings, Jim, and we're going to do that at the beginning. Okay. At least this show. Uh, All right. And then we'll get back around to beginnings at the end of the show. Yes. Uh, but when it comes to endings, it's usually a, a, a bittersweet thing. I mean, in a campaign. Certainly, uh, right? Uh, hopefully. But there are other aspects to endings that need to be taken into account. Right, right, uh, right. Whether it's uh, just with characters, specific mm -hmm. characters, or with uh, sessions themselves, like how to end a session properly, or oh, how certainly. to end yeah, a story yeah. arc properly. Right, like, right, there's, right. There's a lot that goes into this, because like, you're going to have a lot of endings before you get to the end. And hopefully, uh, all the previous endings uh, lead to a better end. Hopefully, right? you know, it's a subject that I see come up occasionally, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on sort of advice forums, and and I, I think that you know, if our viewers will bear with us, we'll have kind of a high concept conversation about it. But yeah, we're talking about just endings, the, the how to mm -hmm. draw things to a satisfying conclusion, how to tie everything up in a, in a neat little bow. So, you know, so often with RPGs and, and the hobby, just the way people's lives work out, the fact that people who play the game have varying levels of commitment and, and passion for it, that so often campaigns just... They just fizzle. They just... Mm -hmm. You know, just there's no big ending, there's no resolution, there's no closure. It's just, oh, we missed that one week and then we couldn't schedule three weeks in a row and now a year later we haven't played. Yeah. And so, like, your game's over, but you don't have the closure about it. So... I think it's one of those things where, you know, there's a lot of, of thought about, like, a new campaign and new characters and, and what am I going to do with this world and, and how am I going to, you know, run this game and do all this and, and not a lot of thought giving to how all of this will end. And so you never have that satisfying moment. And, and as someone who has had many successful endings to campaigns, uh, characters who have retired, uh, arcs that have been closed, it's, 
you're missing out, <laughs> you well, know? Like, there's a whole portion of this game that involves the conclusion, the right. we're done here uh, moment. Again, this is another reason why we play these games. So often, life doesn't have satisfying oh God, no, conclusions. Oh, does. to... When does it? Exactly. Hard, hardly <laughs> ever, right? And so Certainly it's why we, yeah, it's why we play these games. It's why we, we, we try to use these, fan, these fantasies to... I mean, it's a it's a form of escapism. Certainly, uh, yeah. from the from the, from the from hell the, world that we all find the, ourselves from in. the hell world, uh, unsatisfying uh, <laughs> stories, um, whether it's Game of Thrones season eight or just you know, I didn't have a problem with it because to me that shit ain't over. Right, right. It ain't over till the books are written. <laughs> One way to start, yeah, is 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 thinking about how you want to structure your sessions. Certainly, okay. Yes. And I think one an important way to structure sessions that can put you in the best position. Um, say say you have that situation in your party where a lot of times campaigns never really get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you know, are you running serialized campaigns? Are you running episodic campaigns? Yeah. Are you running something that is more conducive to just like this week's session versus yeah. a big long thing? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, mean, I, I think that, that that big long thing has been the norm in RPGs for so long. It's kind of like the big damn book. Yeah. You know, I've seen some people, particularly like indie publishers and the like, who, who lament the fact that the big damn book with the glossy pages and the hardcover and the special art and the cover, blah, 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 are so ingrained in the hobby that like they can't do anything new with print books and I, I sometimes feel that way about traditional gaming and the serialized adventure campaign you know mm -hmm. where we're following these characters uh, if not day to day then certainly in chronological sequ you know order in this through the sequence of their lives and maybe session to session we're picking up right back where we left off and so it kind of creates the pressure that you need to have that continuity and all moments need to be somehow accounted for right. and progressed through sequentially when that's like you're really kind of like putting yourself in a straitjacket there. You you could uh, have a session structure that emphasizes when we end the session, we are ending our time with the characters. We do not know if we'll come back to them, so they need to be in a place where if we don't come back to them, the question of their continued existence is not up for grabs. <laughs> yeah. You know, like they're not caught in the middle of a dungeon. They're not in the middle of the adventure. And so I, I usually I'm a player in these kinds of games, uh, just because I do like the serialized uh, format when I DM. And as a player in an episodic game, it, it can be really fun. Uh, but it usually involves some kind of metagame commitment to leave the dungeon before the session is over, yeah. to get our thing done so that we can get back to civilization before we all have to go home. Yeah. No, it's, and, I would say that probably my, my biggest thing, uh, like say with Starward Bound, I really wanted episodic, and once it started, it became very serialized. Players either don't care or um, like really react strongly against saying like, well, there's a bunch of time that's passed between now and then, because they either want like that time to narrate themselves what they were doing they have a project or something else they want to do well, uh, yeah i mean you know? that's a, that's kind of a min maxing metagame mechanic <laughs> right you know like well in that time i would have been starting to learn this language then if you are going to do if you're going to run the serialized game with right with say like we don't know where we're going to come back when we come back it might be a couple of weeks later it might be the next day it might be whatever then like may, make sure that you can tell the party this is how much downtime you have between when we play so that you can account for and you know Get that all sorted out. If you're not going to do the serialized, they're back at, uh, they're back at home base. You know, we've we've parted from them. They're meanwhile back at Avengers <laughs> headquarters. Right. The serialized format can, you know, it allows for cliffhangers. It allows for, um, you know, moments where you're like you kind of paused in the middle of the adventure, so you can have more time to think up what's going to happen next week, and things can kind of change and evolve. Uh, week to week, even though you're sort of always with the characters. Mm -hmm. um, and ending those particular sessions is more like, where can we end? Can we end on a place where either there is a brief resolution, you know, like this, mm -hmm. we've, we've resolved this one thing, and while we might have things that are propelling us towards the next adventure already, we ended on this note of satisfaction. We, you know, yeah. uh, something came to a close, right? Ending on a, on a solid story beat, yeah, I think it's something that you can really learn from. Um, uh, you can really learn from a really good interviewer, especially like uh, like a Stephen Colbert or like John Stewart or like a, some kind of comedic interviewer, sure. because they're always looking for you got to end on that great laugh. You got to end on yeah. that great moment, uh -huh. and it doesn't matter who does it. 
And yeah. That's the thing is you got to strip the ego out of this. Yeah. You, the DM can't always be the person who provides the great moment. That, sure. <gasps> certainly. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that, yeah. You know. Everybody gasps or yeah. whatever. Um, you know, if, if a player comes up and has an amazing thing and they're like, "I do that," and then you go, "All right, he he does that." You see the spell go off. Uh -huh. And that's where we're going to leave off. That's where we leave off, yeah. You know, yep. mm -hmm. uh, because guess what? Maybe that player did throw a wrench in your works. Yes. <laughs> and you don't really want to, you don't want to tip your hand. Yep. And you give them the satisfaction of having a great ending to that session. Yeah. And it lets you prepare for what is to come next. For what it is to come next, yeah. And, and that's a good call because you, you, uh, you know, basically like notice, recognizing that like this is an out. Right mm -hmm. now I can, I can use this and say like, all right. This has happened. I, you know, you don't, you don't have to say anything else, you know, to the party about it. But you, you know, exactly. just, hey, you know, this is a great time to end. Uh, if it's a little early than when you normally do, take the time to get some feedback. You know, as everybody's packing up, mm -hmm. um, you just might say, hey, and remember, when you're asking for feedback, the more specific a question the more likely you will to get a specific answer beyond, I liked it. It oh, was great, dude. It was great, awesome. dude. Awesome. <laughs> you know. Now you're Morty in the lighthouse. <laughs> it, was, it was a good tale. It was a good tale. <laughs> it seems disingenuous. <laughs> it, it's a skill to give feedback yeah. as well as receive it. Yeah. And so patience with people who are not used to speaking honestly, speaking openly about their experience of it. Maybe they're worried about hurting your feelings. Maybe they don't know yet how they feel. Mm -hmm. But it is a moment to get that started and to just begin the kinds of post-game conversations that are things like, hey, I was, you know, this is something new that I was trying. Did you guys think about it? Uh, maybe give it some thought and email me later in the week. We can talk about it next week. Just like get their brains thinking about it or maybe you do a character audit. Hey guys, it's been a while since I looked at y'all's character sheets. Do you guys, anybody need any new ones? Anybody have anything that's going on, you know, you know that you want updated or to talk to me about? Um, and that's sort of a good way to end those uh, sessions on, and if you're doing a more uh, episodic format, then reaffirming, all right, what are you guys going to do? What is, what's next week? Mm -hmm. You know, what are y'all's plans? What are y'all's thoughts? Anything you want to follow up on? Serialized endings, ending on a story beat, ending on a, uh, a revelation, a surprise, uh, ending on a moment of tension, you know, what's behind that door, a growl or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, it, it shudders as something large and heavy slams up against it. It's time for us to pack up. We will have to figure out what's going on, what's behind that door next week. Sometimes that can work to really great effect in that the players are sort of like, ah, you know, mm -hmm. dreading it or, or wildly speculating all week what, might, what it might be. And other times it gives them time to plan for a tough encounter. So you can do it right before a really tough fight or what you anticipate might be a tough fight and kind of uh, telegraph that to the players. And now they've got all week to kind of go, oh, we, you know, man, we don't know what's beyond there, but here's what we've got. Here's, the, mm -hmm. here's yeah, how we're going to formulate our opening moves. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. spells do we have? You know, you're yeah. going to buff this first, you know. And that's... Yeah, that, that kind of thing. Session after care can sometimes be helpful. Mm -hmm. If it was an intense situation or if something happened that got underneath somebody's skin, just a quick, hey, you doing all right? Everything okay? You know, sorry about that if it was your fault as the DM for, mm -hmm. you know, killing a character or something. Just like taking a brief minute to reconnect with the people you've played with as people, yep. recognizing that the game has an impact on them, uh, you know, potentially, mm -hmm. uh, is, is a good way to just uh, wrap up a nice session. I think. Oh, most definitely. And it also uh, is a great segue into our next section, oh. which is character endings. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes, you know, it doesn't have to mean a character death. Certainly, like I've, right. cer I've certainly, sometimes I've done this just for player being a being a player and being flippant and right, being right, right. just undecisive. And then sometimes when you're playing a character and it's an odd feeling, but yeah. you're playing a character and you realize like my character would no longer be doing this. Yes. My yeah. character, and I did, the, I think probably the one that just always pops up in my head is Antonia Stark, the Iron Maiden. Uh -huh. She's a badass evoker in a big combat, got way too full of herself and got off by herself and almost fucking died. Like right. literally bought, like almost bought the farm. Yep. And I was just like, she wouldn't do this. She would no longer do this. Yep. She is a rich weapons manufacturer, and she was making making money, plenty. Yep. And I was I, I retired that character because she had one too many close run-ins with death. <laughs> yeah. And I made new characters, and I was sad because I finally got to play Iron Man, and I think it actually worked, <laughs> but it just made sense. Yes. And it's it was one of the hardest things I've ever done because when you start to actually get in that that mode, you're just like. But yeah. it just I just felt wrong like wanting to continue playing. A good place to retire a character is when their motivation for adventuring is no longer there. And mm -hmm. and it is one of those things where it's like what is the 
I, you know, this is going to sound stupid, but like, what is the purpose of a character? Yeah. You know, is, is it a role that you inhabit as an actor? Is it a game piece that you move around like it's a pawn? Is it just a, a, a fictional element that gets mm -hmm. manipulated along with NPCs and everything else? And I, I think it's like, it's a little bit of all three. People yeah. clearly like really identify with their characters, really get into them mm -hmm. and they're special to them, yeah. you know, um, but I, that's, a, I, that is not how I play, <laughs> like, yeah. so it's a, it's a different uh, perspective for me. Uh, yeah, so. well, I think it, it, it kind of ties into whenever you hear an actor say, like, I don't play the character, I see where the character leads me. Sure, and that's what, yeah, and, you yeah. Know, sometimes yeah. it leads me in places I don't want to go, and some people, like, look at actors saying that, and you're like, are you full of shit, or, like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, think about your role-playing characters. Certainly, like, yeah. this is the same thing. When it moves beyond just being an outlet for your desires, wants, and frustrations, mm. and you actually start thinking about a living, breathing person in a world that... Deepening that your inhabits, connection with the game. That, yeah, it inhabits it. Yes, it is a much deeper connection to the game, and you will have a much better time playing, in my opinion. Yeah. Especially when you get to the point where, like I did, you, like, look at this character and go... It's been fun, Antonio, but maybe you should retire to home office, and I'll I'll, I'll, yeah. see, I'll see you around. It's kind of sad, but yeah. you know, and it's okay to send them off, you yeah. know, and 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 bring in some new blood. Retiring a character, you it, you know, marked the end of, of that. It, it marks the end of that that adventurer's career, but it's also like an accomplishment for you, and mm -hmm. especially if you are playing in a game where XP is earned and not on some kind of cycle like uh, you know milestone a session timer basically but it's like you've got to go in and like okay we've got to find these things we've got to extract this treasure defeat these monsters stop this thing and and yeah i ground out sixteen thousand xp to get from this level to that level and yeah. like there's a sense of accomplishment that comes with it that i was reading you know a few weeks ago where someone was making a defense of the old school level limits for elves dwarves halflings and the like and they're saying yeah humans have an unlimited uh, level cap in in you know AD and D uh, versions of the game and and that's fine and good but like I've retired so many halflings dwarves and elves after a successful adventuring career yeah it might have been eighth level or fourth level or sixth level or whatever but in my mind that is the end I've done it you know my friends who are playing human characters they've never retired a character every one of them has been left dangling at the end of a campaign where this guy's like I've had so many who've gone off and had powerful adventures and, mm. and saved, you know, people that they loved and, and had these epic times and then they go back home and you make a new character. Okay. You get more out of it. And so, like, retiring a character is entirely a self-imposed goal for yeah. yourself. And you can look at it and go, like, well, my character's motivation for adventure is to accomplish this one thing. You know, their, their goal is done. You know, I've seen a lot of <laughs> players where they, you know, like, how am I going to keep this character here, they want to keep playing the character, they want to stay in the group, but mm -hmm. it's also viable to say, yeah, you know, if you need me, I'll be here, but otherwise, time to get back to that farm. Too old for this shit. You either uh, <laughs> live long enough to see yourself become the Danny Glover, or you die in the attempt. <laughs> right. Uh, but you will eventually get too old for it. You will eventually. When it comes to character arcs, there, yeah. are, there are, you know, it's either you play the whole arc to the end and you retire the character, or at some point in there, you need to find a new beginning of an arc. Right? Certainly, right. And so yeah. that that can, for some people, that can be a little a little rough. Like Invisible Sun, which we've kind of talked about before, has is very much character driven and uses arcs to to do that. You buy arcs are both how you earn and what you spend your XP on. Yeah. So it, it, they have sort of dual purpose that way. And you can have up to three of them uh, at a time, and and it, but the mechanics of them are very simple and and, and eminently portable to any number of places. It's so basically you take uh, what you know, what you see as the steps necessary to complete this goal, somewhere between five to seven of them, assign them some different XP values, and then at the end of a session, you just talk through with the player and DM. Do you think that this happened? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, even in the case of Invisible Sun, but it could happen in D&D, it might happen as a course of downtime activity. Yeah. It might happen in an exchange with another NPC that, you know, just by happenstance. They're not necessarily these big moments but you kind of like go through and look and say like, okay, have, you know, this is part of that process. What do you, what do you think about that? Where do you think your character is on it? What have they done? Do we need to make any roles to kind of like, is there anything uncertain that we need to make a role for basically? The Invisible Sun referee and the player, they 
figure it out. And I don't see how you can't do something like that in a more traditional game like Dungeons and Dragons where your arc is to, you know, learn a particularly powerful spell or to establish a connection with an NPC that, that's particularly close to you. Like, that necessitates you having metagame conversations with the DM to say, like, I want these situations to be presented in the game. I want the opportunity to resolve them. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about Invisible Sun is it includes conditions for what happens if you fail or succeed in each of the arcs. Yeah. So there's always a moment in an arc where you will have to roll dice, you will have to, you know, the outcome will be uncertain, but it accounts for the fact that you could fail and have to retry or fail and never get to try again or mm -hmm. succeed and, and move on. So I think that's important for an arc. Uh, and like I said, the it could be a side quest thing. It could be tied to the main quest that you have going on in your world. Um, there's a lot of different ways to use them, and, and I find them like very satisfying to DM and play for because if you can find a way to work in something that the characters really care about into your game and find a way for them to resolve it and get closure on it, find a way to end it, then you will have players who are way more invested uh, in your world and you know like really care about their characters and mm -hmm. it's just cool to be able to say like yeah we did that you you wanted to do that and we did it completing arcs is is amazing um yes especially yeah. you know if you if you get them really invested in their character and everything but uh sometimes though <laughs> sometimes that is not the case and yeah. sometimes characters die sometimes they and do. they die before their time sometimes they die right when they should mm -mm -mm. and sometimes you just see the moment uh -huh. where you know my character's about to die and this is exactly what should happen yes oh i uh, mostly for those seizing yeah. that opportunity uh -huh. Uh -huh. of pure heroism which is yeah. all it really usually is it's yes. just it's usually a choice of like well do you stay or do you go yeah yeah you know yeah. do you do you take do you accept the risk yeah, yeah. I, I think so and especially like recognizing those moments as they crop up organically is really cool mm -hmm. I, I think there's maybe been one or two times i've sought out a character death and the dm was not willing to play ball and that was kind of, those were weird moments from like, oh, t surely 12 ogres for a fourth level character <laughs> would be enough to smash me to a pulp. Why did they all run away? So here's one that's controversial is, is do, you know, do you let the player approach the DM and say like, hey, I'm tired of playing this character. I'd like for them to go out in, you know, in a blaze of glory and, and kind of like engineer the situation that that has yet to happen organically. Mm -hmm. I think there, there are some people out there who sort of feel like if you, go and tell the DM I want my character to die. Like that's, I don't know what they're cheating. You know, I don't, I don't see you know, what, what it is that, that gets objected to, but there are people who feel like it's not within the spirit of the game. Yeah, well now you're writing a scene in, a, in an improv game. You know? Sure, I mean, right, you're, right, you're, yeah. You're, you're, you're writing out predetermination in something that should be random and you know. I, I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, sure, except it's your character. Well, you know, that's, that's the thing that makes it different for me. It is one of those things where I'm not about to sit there and, and tell a, uh, you know, player like, yeah, you've, you've got to play this character you don't like. It doesn't make sense for them to just walk away or if, if it would be more satisfying for you, that, you know, the player that they, that they perish heroically, then like, okay. Like we we can find a way to work that in. Mm -hmm. Like you're not asking for a ma wait wait a minute. You're not asking for a magic item. You're no. not asking for something special. No. You're not asking for a special power. No. Like you're asking to go out in a blaze of glory. Yeah, you're just asking for that one extra wave of enemies in the encounter today. A DM who's in tune with the, their group and a group that's in tune with their DM will be able to engineer these kinds of situations more organically than than ones who are just starting out or who might not feel comfortable manipulating things to produce a certain end. I'm sympathetic to the people I saw somewhere online, uh, you know, I was talking about if there's a mutation table in a game, I want to roll on it and I will do things regardless of if they're in character or not to make sure I get to roll on that mutation table. Mm -hmm. And someone you know, on Twitter was like, well, that's, you know, I like to just play and let the dice fall where they may. And that sounds like you're trying to predetermine and engineer a situation. And I just was like, it's a play priority of mine. Like, I, it just is. Like, I, I think it's a fun way to enjoy the game, which is to have your character be maimed and mutated and driven deranged by the strange magics that they come across. I have a lot of fun with it and tend to play characters who wouldn't mind or who would at mm -hmm. least uh, not be freaked out by it. So the line between what the player wants and what the character wants is often pretty blurry. So I have no problem saying like, yeah, tired of playing this character? Want to go out like a champ? Yeah. Let's see what we can do, you know? Because I mean, you can just as easily just have the character leave. And you just then, easily have the character leave. They can just they make easily... a new one and it's like, okay, whatever. That seems weird. And it's yeah. like, well. And, and the thing is, is you're providing them the opportunity 
Like, the dice are still going to be rolled. They still might go out ignobly from a poison trap. They might still get overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the enemy, and their brave sacrifice amounted to a couple extra rounds that they bought the party as opposed to minutes, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of different ways it could go. The outcome's still uncertain. You're just arranging for the opportunity. Well, how is that any different than, you know, at the beginning in session zero where you ask them, like, what kind of game do you want to play? Well, yeah, want to do exactly. high fantasy yeah, yeah. with dragons. Yes, you know, yeah. it's, it's very it's similar. Just, Later on down the line, you're like adding another. Uh, by the way, can we also have this? I kind of want to die. I kind of want to die. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. What's it like? Maybe the DM doesn't play along, and you just uh, do it anyway. You mm -hmm. know, there are times when I've done that. Ending a character because they're they're dead. Get letting go of them. But you know, are you do you, you get them res? Do you not? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those are all questions for uh, you know the player and the group. But at some point, it's okay to just say like, yeah, I'm going with something new and mm -hmm. play, you know just had a good time. What was your favorite character death? I think the most legit one was when uh, Sean from Power Score RPG got me in the Tomb of Annihilation. Because mm. a 10th level druid, and man, I just was not on my game that day. I didn't any protective magics. I had like, I was doing um, erupting earths, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and, the, and not necessarily the using pots. On the, on the, yeah. Yeah, on the skeleton pots. It yeah. just kept coming and coming and coming. I didn't have bark skin up. I didn't have any of my totems out. I didn't have any creatures out. You know, I was a, come on, I was a shepherd druid. Should at least had a totem and some you know, some animal summons out for 10th level. But I, I was so sloppy, and I, I appreciated it because it revealed my sloppiness. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it, it helped me sharpen it. So one uh, other character death that I have, for me, recently, I didn't like because I, I was like, oh, glad I got to kill that character. We were playing 9th level, we were called 9th level in Land Between Two Rivers. They were surviving a, an ambush uh, on them as they were going through a kobold town. And the party druid, uh, I, I killed the party druid with a finger of death spell. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of one of those things where I was like, oh, I, I like, I, this has been a while since I've accidentally killed a character above, mm -hmm. say, third level in fifth edition. Yeah. And so in that sense, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, I, the, the, the game still got it. You know, the party had mixed feelings about it. Some of the players didn't want the druid uh, to, to die and had the means to... Uh, to resurrect them, it should be worth noting that when the druid died, it was infected with a slotty chaos phage. So it had a slot growing in it, and finger of death, of course, when it kills you, turns you into a zombie. So there were those things that needed to be overcome. And the fact that it was your brother, Jim? Did well, you, Josh, you know, he, he doesn't mind. You know, I, I yeah, killed I know. a lot of his characters. It's just glaze over that But it fact. sucks. I love the character. Like, I was really sad. And for yeah. like two or three weeks afterwards that we played, I was just like super bummed because I loved the character, the character was really unique. I was writing a custom subclass for him mm -hmm. <laughs> that we were uh, playtesting, but it made sense. It was a specifically an encounter in which the enemies were trying to kill the party. I don't normally do that. Most of the time my, my enemies have other objectives than, yeah. than straight up uh, murder, death, kill. And, but this time it was like, no, this was an assassin that hired a party of desperados and lured the players into a trap. And that's what they were trying to do, and they almost won. They managed to get one of the party, almost got the, the one that they were looking for, but no, the, you know, they, they pulled it out. It was mm -hmm. a great, great uh, combat, like one of the better 5th edition combats I've had. Fast, fun, exciting, and uh, surprising. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's a boring answer. It's, it's, it's my first one ever. Uh, <laughs> sorry. But dying while killing the first Draco Lich ever... It's kind, of hard, it's kind of hard to top that. It's, it's kind of hard to top that. And, um, and, you know, those are those moments for a character where they, they define him. They, you know, the mm -hmm. fact that, that Rockard's dead is, like, the fa is okay because of the way in which Rockard died. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah Wielding his dragon slayer into the heart of the undead dragon. Boom. As you plunge into lava. There you go. <laughs> Here's the thing about that choice. Yeah. Because that was the thing, is that was a very specific choice, but it still came down to a die roll that I could have easily failed yes yeah i mean i'm yeah. pretty sure i needed like a 14 or above to hit that thing sounds about right and i i'm pretty sure i rolled a 15 or a 16. yeah and so i barely hit it um but luckily it only had like two hit points i think is what what he told me later yeah. <laughs> it, like it literally had like two like all you do is spit on the dragon right this leads to our last like area yeah, yeah. which is how campaigns how to properly end campaigns whether it's to a natural conclusion that it's it's been or maybe you kind of see the writing on the wall and everybody's not excited so you kind of have to end it early but you want to do it right i yeah. mean there's different ways to think about like how you end a campaign right yeah especially that latter one where you're where you're kind of it's 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 
it's sort of a surprise. Like we weren't expecting to end here, yeah. but maybe not everybody is is having a great time, or or the DM's not, which is really at some point all you need to start a new one. Uh, well, although I do think you should, you know, talk to your players first before you mm -hmm. decide to do that. Ending a campaign is a tough one. We could probably do like a whole show on it, but at the same time, I, I you know, I, I, I think grouping them with these is good because a lot of the same elements that you want for ending a session or when you retire a character are similar to what you want out of ending a campaign. You want it yeah, to be just a larger though. They're yeah. just larger, right? Like, yeah. so like, you know, you want to uh, tie up the loose ends, mm -hmm. right? You know, before, if you anticipate that your campaign is coming to a close or coming to an end, then it, now is a good time to check in with the players again. Hey guys, was there any last things that you wanted to do with your characters or any mm -hmm. goals that we haven't done yet? Um, you know, bonus points if you're able to weave those things into ongoing, uh, elements of your campaign that you're trying to wrap up. Now is the time if you haven't sort of like overcome the principal, uh, you know, antagonist of the of the campaign, to start planning for that. Are we going to do a big set piece thing? Are we going to just let the party approach it however they like? And then thinking of of like what happens afterwards. Where where is the uh, is there an epilogue? Is there sort of the uh, I don't know what you call it, the in the rising and falling action. I guess it's called falling action. Uh, after the climax. You know, it's a chance for the players to revel in and enjoy the success of a, of a fully finished campaign. And I don't necessarily mean 1 through 20 here. This is something that probably you discussed in a session zero, where you're like, yeah, we're only going to play for 20 sessions or we're gonna to play to level 10. And knowing before you begin where you would like for the game to end can be a really useful and powerful thing. You know, I think a lot of people when they start, they default to that old model of, we're gonna keep going until we hit 20th level and, and we're gonna do this and that and it's gonna be this big sprawling campaign. And I used to really like that. I used to like that energy that would be generated by those talks. I used to feel like, oh, that's really fun. I'm glad that I'm playing with people who are really excited. But like, as my gaming has moved away from the years long serialized campaign model that we go until we're ultra powerful to the targeted, like we're gonna play this game for a set number of weeks, then we're gonna be done style gaming. I really kind of like the short 16 to 20 week mm -hmm. campaign because you get a lot of time in there. There's a lot of time to do a lot of stuff. You can get a good level range if you're playing something like D&D. &D. And it means that everyone knows that this isn't just indefinite, that mm -hmm. we're gonna reach an end at some point. That needs to be kept in mind. The things that you wanna do and that you'd like to accomplish need to factor that in. What do you do in the session to session? In that respect, like thinking in terms of your campaigns as having end points is good and yeah. could be really productive. Uh, reinforcing the mortality of a campaign. Yeah. It forces your players to appreciate each session, each moment. Certainly, so you yeah. get the most out of it, because like all things, they come to an end. They'll come you know? to an end, yeah, yeah. So like determining when it's all over is a, uh, can be a challenge, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, is it something that everybody's just sort of ready for it to be over and they just don't want to drop the campaign, they'd like for it to come to a satisfying end? Uh, is it a case of, you know, there's a new game coming out that you guys really want to try and, you know, it's just taking you a little longer than you thought to get through this one mm -hmm. or you're bored or, just you know, moving or something, <laughs> that sitting down and, and having that conversation of like, it seems like we're probably heading towards the end or I can feel, usually as a DM, you know, you can say something like, oh, I feel like we're getting there towards the end or, or my own enthusiasm for the game is starting to, to run out. Let's, let's bring this to a satisfying ending mm -hmm. or at least a conclusion for, for the time being. Looking at the parts of say the characters side arcs side quests whatever they've got going on that you can tie up it's a way to bring closure to a campaign and the more you kind of think about it anticipate it and just openly acknowledge that it's going to happen then the more you can get like a complete experience <laughs> of, mm -hmm. of the game as opposed to ones where you're you know you never really finish it what if you've never finished a video game you know i, I barely finish video games oh, that's me the last like 15 years but yeah <laughs> you know um, but like it's, it's annoying. Yeah, sure, it's, it can get annoying. And, you, and it might, you know, there are certainly video games I know because of my tendency to not finish them that I never start. Because I'm just going to be like, yeah, I don't, I don't have 120 hours to sink into this. And I know if I sink more than three into it, I'm going to want to finish it. You know, and so I just, easier not to. And so thinking about your D&D &D campaigns, because you can end them whenever you want, 
as shorter, more concise, more contained, more focused. And then maybe you do one of those and you end it and maybe later on you come back with the same characters and you do another one and another one and well, you can have many, a series of mini campaigns with the same character. Well, you know? I mean, it, like, like we've talked about many times that 5th uh, edition is, is kind of geared more towards that high action adventure, like Avenger style gaming. I mean, that lends itself to that. Yeah, yeah. Where each definitely. campaign is the individual movie or yeah. whatever, and you'll come back for Avengers 2 uh, maybe one day, and you know maybe somebody multi-classed or whatever, uh, and uh. bring in new characters, but maybe some people still want the old ones. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, but, but leaving that option open, and yes. while, while giving everyone a satisfying conclusion of what you're having, yeah. will only beget more play. It's the resolution, it's sort of the satisfaction of tying it all up as opposed to just dropping it and you never really talk about it again. Make these moments in your campaign really stand out. Mm -hmm. And even if you're only able to get one of these in once or so, the amount of satisfaction you get from, from walking away from that campaign going, I'm done. I don't have any NPCs I need to think about anymore. I don't have a bunch of leftover stuff that I wished I'd included because I didn't, you know, we just stopped playing. It's energizing. It's, you know, you sit there and, and, and you're like, well, I, okay, well, what's the next one? And, and it's a very, um, like I said, it's a very satisfying experience. And, and I think the best way to get it is not to hope that you luck out and get in one of those groups that plays forever and does whatever, you know has these big long campaigns, it's to make sh you know, you recognize that you can do something about that and uh, do what you can to shape the campaign you're in into one that comes to a satisfying ending. Yeah. yeah. And say all that you need to say before the end. There you go. Because you will regret it later. You'll regret it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. WebDM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons. The Web Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our interview with Dale Kingsmill of Monarchs Factory YouTube channel. Web DM is a proud partner of D&D Beyond, our favorite supplement for our D&D games. We've got a link to them in the description. Go and check them out. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, we've got games on Twitch every week and they're archived on our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays. Thanks for watching.